Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Today we're going to do kind of a continuation lesson of a famous riff video that I did years ago and I never finished. So instead of just uh, teaching the rest of it, I'm actually just going to teach the whole song again uh, just so we're not just leaving out a couple of riffs there that I've already taught. Uh, so if you're coming here from that video, you'll probably see um, um, a riff that you already know. Uh, but other than that, if you didn't see that video, um, don't worry. We're gonna do the entire song in this one lesson here. So let's talk about the tuning first. Um, uh, Dimebag always kind of did this uh, kind of a weird thing with his tuning, um, where he uh, basically this tuning you can consider it standard. Um, I'm playing it in standard tuning, uh, so no alterations here. Uh, but to actually get where he's at, he's about halfway between standard and half step down. Um, I think basically his tech one time said you actually tune the guitar down a half step, then raise it 40 cents. Um, so we're not talking about money here, we're talking about acoustic physics here. But a half step from one note to the next is like the, the distance of like 100 cents. So uh, 50 cents up would be halfway between those two notes or a quarter of a step instead of a half step. All right, so it's getting complicated. So it's not quite halfway between. It's a little bit less than half. So anyway, if you want to go crazy with it, that's the tuning. You can research this tuning. You can probably get to it. Anyway, I'm teaching the lesson in standard, so you don't have to worry about that right now. Um, and So let's get to it. Before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that little notification bell so you'll know when I release a new lesson. Um, and uh, please check out my Guitar Academy. It's at uh, the guitarlessons365.com. I've got thousands of people who have already signed up for it. Um, we got a great community over there, and I hope you'll join us too. All right, so let's get started here. So after, uh, we don't have to worry about the tuning right now unless you're playing along with the album. We have this intro, which has like a flanger on it. So you can, I'll throw a little flanger on All right, so that's just Paul muted low E string, uh, just kind of just alternate pick it. No, it's not, not too fast. So that keeps going, and over that we have uh, this little riff. All right, and that last one. It's really layered. The whole guitar track comes in. This, all the guitar layers come in. All right, so that little thing is going to be up here at the twelfth fret, heavily palm muted. So you're gonna play. I'm just straight alternate picking it. So that's going to be 12, 15, 12, 15 on the low E string. So we have this. Then you're going to play 12 on the A string, back down to that 15 on the on the uh, uh, low E. So, we're, so you're going to do that twice too. Then you're going to play 13 on the A string, back to that 15 on the low E, then 12 again on the A string, and back to that 15th on the uh, low E. So we have this real slow. All right, and then this last little thing is where we, uh, we have a little hammer on here. We hammer 13 to 14 on the A string over to 12 on the D string. I'm going to repeat that. All right, so the last time playing it, we just do the first half just that far. 
So this is like the fourth time playing through it. And so you stop right there and just do this, which is just 13, 12 on the A string, then 15, 12 on the low E. Let me slide that down. And when it gets to those notes, you're gonna hear a bunch of guitars come in playing that exact same line. So it's really heavily layered from there on out. All right, and then we have what's pretty much the main riff of the track. All right, so that's I'm kind of just taken down an octave. Now there, uh, like I mentioned in the other video, if you saw that riff video, there's you see a lot of people play that like this, which is obviously much much easier to play. Uh, but it's not how Dimebag did it for one specific reason, is because when he gets to that A note, it's actually an A power chord that he's playing there. So sometimes it can be hard to pick up. So he's not going. Just a complete octave down here. He's doing it like just a, an octave lower. But when he gets to that A string, he's going to make that an A power chord. So you're actually going to hit the A string and the, the D string here. It's going to be played at the second fret. Let's play this. All right, so that's the difference. Everything else is just this riff that we played here, taking down an octave to the open strings. So 0, 3, 0, 3 on the low E string. Then you're going to play uh, the open A string, the second fret there on the D. Back to that third fret on the low E. And repeat that. Let's play this. All right, and then first fret on the A to the third fret on the low E. Then the open A down to the low uh, third fret on the low E again. And then that hammer one to two on the A. Open D. So with this. All right, so once again, you play that through and the last time, just like we did here, you're just gonna zero one there, three zero on the low E. All right, so after you've played that a couple of times, we get to this. All right, so that's just low E string there, just palm muted. All right, so the, the timing of it, um, you know, I'm not gonna worry too much about, obviously if you're playing, if you're trying to attempt to play this song, you probably can, I don't have to like break down the exact pattern. You can just hear it and play it. All right, so that's how I'm gonna assume that you, you can just follow, it's a low E string, all right? But then we get this little quick little, little lick in there. And that's open A, hammer one, hammer two, then the open D string. So like this. Again. Again. So after you've done that three times, we have this little quick lick. So that's really cool to lick. You're gonna hammer, you're gonna play the open A, hammer on one, pull off back to the A. And then play the third fret twice. Heavily palm muted it. The third fret in the low E string. Then you're gonna do the lick again. Except now instead of playing three twice on the low E, you're gonna play three one. through the same. All right, 
Now, so it's, it's kind of just a lot of that. Whenever you're hearing that verse or that kind of part right there, it's just a low E string, just kind of chug along. Throughout the song, you'll hear the, you hear that, that thing coming in at different times. That's what you're always hearing when you hear that. Sometimes it'll be twice in a row. And like that, sometimes he'll not do it. So obviously, if you just know the song, you can hear, you, you can, you know what the song sounds like. It's gonna be easy to match it up. It's the same little three techniques: the low E string, that little lick, and then that little ending. All right. So whenever you hear that riff, that's what's going on there. So we don't have to really kind of detail it so much. All right. So um, let's get to the uh, pre-chorus, which looks like this. All right, so that's, um, call it a pre-chorus, I guess. Power chord, the th uh, third fret there, just kind of fast pump. And then up to the fourth fret. And then back down to three. And then go six, five, four. All right, obviously we have that little ending there, which is just the same thing as the main riff in the ending of the main riff. All right, so from there, we'll go back through the. All right, so now uh, we're kind of going through the song, hearing a lot of things that we've already played. Um, that main riff, though, at the very end of it, right before you go into the solo, we have a little bit different little um, chord sequence there. It looks like this. All right, so that's the same riff, except uh, halfway through, the very last time. Right there, we just go to some power chords, three, two, one power chords off the low E. And that takes us into the solo section. So let me just play the chords underneath the solo first. So pretty simple stuff. Uh, just first hold an E minor chord. Low E hit a couple times and just hit the E minor chord, really just to the G string there. And then we have just the standard C major chord. Yep, he actually figured out a way to throw cowboy chords into the cowboys from hell. Uh, so anyway, just a standard C major. And then we move up here, we're gonna play the C sharp here, the fourth fret there on the A string, along with the bar at the second on the D and the G. So it's just those three strings. So it... And then we're gonna move up fifth fret there on the A, fourth fret on the D, and second fret on the G. And then we're just gonna... You're, just, you're gonna play sixth fret on the a, uh, low E string, fifth fret on the A. So play that there, then move it back one fret, then move it back two frets. So that's the third fret and second fret there, the last one. Just basically do that section four times underneath the solo. Um, if you have two guitarists there, you know, obviously Dimebag just, it just, he just went for the solo and didn't worry about the rhythm guitar part. All right, so let's take a look at that solo. I'm gonna play through it real quick for you and then uh, we will take a look at it uh, note for note. So here we go. <laughs>
right, some crazy, crazy, crazy stuff in that solo. So let's start here with this uh, first one. Kind of that hammer on five to seven on the A string. Well, here's the first phrase. All right, so that's hammer on five to seven and then slide into the seventh fret there on the A and go seven on the A, eight on the D. So we've got back and forth a few times. And just kind of hang out on that eighth fret and just really put some big vibrato on it. And then you're gonna kind of do the same thing, but up an octave. Just slide up the D string to the 14th fret there on the um, on the tune. So we have this. So sliding in the 14th on the D and then play it. And you can go across 14 on the D, 15 on the G a few times. And then you hit uh, uh, just like a pinch harmonic on that on that 15th fret there on the G string. All right, and then we have this first really fast run, which looks like this. All right, so we have a consistent pattern all the way up here. Now, I've talked about this before in lessons. A lot of dime bag solos incorporate um, symmetrical licks. Um, so it's basically not really built out of a specific scale. It's built out of a lot of his patterns that you see him play in the solos are built out of just a finger shape, not the solo. So it's, it's really cool that it gives, you can still have a sense of a tonality, at, but at the same time, really have all these outside notes. And if you play it fast enough, which he certainly could, um, it sounds cool and it doesn't sound like there's a bunch of bad notes. So let's start the pattern first is just 11 on the low E, then 12 and then um, 15. So basically, you're just going to repeat that uh, twice. So I'm just going strict alternate picking. So like a six note pattern. Then move it to the A, and then the D, and the G, and the B. All right, so then when we get to the high E string, He adds some kind of legato type play to it, but there's no really set way. He doesn't really repeat himself a lot. So it's the same 11, 12, 15. It's just picking a couple and then doing like a quick legato. So that's the best way to look at it. Instead of trying to get a distinct pattern, which he's not looking at it the way, he, and like I said, he doesn't really repeat it the same way each time. He's just kind of doing some rapid picking with some legatos out to it. All right, then he takes, um, we can continue with the same, the next, it's more the same, just at the 12th fret on the high E, 14 on the high E, and 17 on the high E. All right, so that is. You do that. I'm sorry, I missed that bend, didn't I? It's a step and a half bend at the 15th fret after that. Kind of legato work on the high E string. Then you move up to this pattern 12, 14, 17, that same little legato slash picking lick. And then he moves it into a monster stretch. Um, 12 there on the high E, 15, and then 19. A uh, little pro tip here, you can just have the webbing of your fingers removed, and you can easily, me uh, yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm just kidding, do not do that. I do not want to get sued. Um, anyway, just uh, get your hand down, lower the thumb down here so you can really get the stretches. You know, Dimeback had a really kind of upright playing. He, he wasn't really angling his fingers like that. He was really upright, more than you'll see most players. And it allowed him to do those big stretches like that. All right, so just, just practice it like that, and, and uh, I guarantee your fingers will grow one inch per month. Guaranteed. All right, so anyway, we'll start 12 on the high E. 
15, and 19. So you do that lick real quick that we were doing here. And then you do it there real quick. And then it gets really crazy. He does a descending symmetrical lick where he goes. So we're gonna pick the 19, slide up to 20, slide back down to 19, pull off to 15, pull off to 12, hammer back on 15. So that's the lick. So what you wanna do now is do that on every string. This is not comfortable. All right, then 19, the G string. So we have this. And then all the way down to the D string. And then you're gonna resolve it there. I'm there at the uh, 19th fret on the uh, A string. So that's where it ends. That's where the pain ends. All right, so when you get down there, a lot of vibrato. And then we have this. So it's the same lick that we had done before, but it's up here. Playing 19 on the A to 20 on the D. All right, next phrase. All right, so we have a kind of, kind of a two bends, a kind of a bend and, quick bend and release at the 15th fret on the B string. So I did a bend, release, and went back up. And while I up there, grab the 15th fret on the high E, and back into another bend. And then slide up the B string, up to the 17th fret there, and then uh, once again, we're doing that kind of a uh, tritone lick that he's done throughout the solo a few times, over to 18 on the high E string. Then a step and a half bend there. Uh, more fun stuff. All right, and then we have this pretty straightforward lick. All right, so we have... Uh, that's just sliding up the G string, and then we, uh, we're we gonna start with the lick. Uh, you can start with an upstroke on the B string, on the 12th fret. And then you're gonna go 15, 14, 12 on the G. So we have up, down, up, down, and then back up 14, 15, up, down. So we have this. So it's a six note pattern, and just repeat it. All right, so after you've done it a while, So that's double stops at the 12th fret on the G and the B there. And then kind of a bend and release of the double stops at the 14 on the B and the G. Back to 12, over to 14 on the D. All right, so now coming out of those double stops, we have some more kind of bluesy type stuff. All right, so we're getting to the end here. So after those double stops, we have a whole step, I mean, a half step bend at the 14th fret on the high E. And then we're gonna play 12, 14 on the high E string over to uh, uh, bend at the 15th fret on the B string, whole step bend. Then play 12, 15 on the high E string, roll back over to that bend on the B string, and then back to 12, 14, I believe. Yeah, 12, 14, with the bend of the 15th fret. So we have this all together. Then you're gonna play back to the 12 on the uh, high E. And then over to the 14 on the B string. Kind of a bend and release. Pull off to 12. Over to 14 on the G. And then we have this last little look that ends the solo. 
All right, so that's sliding into the 12th fret on the B string, then playing the 15 on the high E. Then slide into 15 on the B string, over to 19 on the high E, so this one. Now after this, you're gonna keep this shape here, that's kind of four fret spread there, and you're just gonna move it up, slide it up one fret at a time. We have this. The first one there, the 12th fret, is only a three fret spread. And then, four. And when you get to that 22nd fret there, uh, on the high E string, that's when you do a big bend there. All right, so we are through that solo, and we are down to probably my favorite part of the song. This section, just, I don't know, it's called the jam section. Uh, it's got some really cool stuff in it. So it looks like this. So we already know that riff up there. So let's start just start here at the seventh fret on the A string and pull off seven to five. So we're just pulling off seven to five and then a quick down up palm muted on the low E string. So we have this. So I did that after that third pull off there. You're gonna move over to the fifth fret on the uh, D string. Kind of a quick little bend and release and with a pinch harmonic on it. And then repeat again. Except this time the last note there is on the seventh fret on the D with the pinch harmonic. So this. So you see when I started over, I go back to the, start it with that low E's and then go back to the rhythm. So the second time you play that five, it goes into this little descending. All right, so. You see I got a lot of pinch harmonics on that. You can do it starting with the just the D string of the 12th fret muted really heavily. Or you can just just kind of a kind of two dead notes there to start it. And maybe that would be a better way to do it. Kind of kind of dead notes. You're gonna start the lick by pulling off 14 to 12 on the G string. Over to 14 on the uh, I'm sorry, 14 on the 14 to 12 on the G to 14 on the D. And then here we kind of have the same pattern going down. You pick 12, slide down to 11, over to 12 on the D. And then pick 11, slide down to 9, over to 11 on the D. And then 9, slide down to 7, over to 9 on the D. Then 7, slide down to 6 over to seven on the D string. So while I'm doing those notes, I'm adding some pinch harmonics and really digging into it. Now the second time, instead of doing it here, we're gonna move it up an octave. All right, so that's gonna start with that. Pulling off that couple of dead notes again. And then you're gonna pull off 17 to 15 on the high E. Over to 17 on the B string. And then play 15, slide down to 14 on the high E. Over to 15 on the B. 
Then slide 15 to, I'm mean, sorry, 14 to 12 on the high E. Over to 14 on the B. Then slide 12 to 10 on the high E. Over to 12 on the B. And then slide 10 to 9 on the high E. Over to 10 on the B. So it is. So after we've done that one, we go back to that same little intro with. And we're back through all the, uh, the same, uh, same riff that we did before. So after he goes into that main riff again, you'll see them go back into. Same stuff. So after that last one, we just get to the end, which is... So that's just a few hits on the low E. And then we had that quick little... That little hammer, zero, one, pull off to zero again. And then just hit the third fret there on the low E once. Pause slightly, then hit the three again to zero. All right, and that is it for Cowboys from Hell. Um, a, a guitar workout for sure, both lead guitar-wise, rhythm-wise, but that's Dimebag, man. Greatest metal guitar player that ever lived. It's kind of hard to argue with that. All right, I hope you uh, see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.